Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuits. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball. It's a very descriptive and accurate title because that's exactly what the game actually is. You are a robot on some kind of unicycle roller thingy. It's a derby of some description and there's a disco going on and it involves dodgeball. The better way to describe it perhaps, which is a little less clunky but less amusing, would be that this is Instagib in one form or another, or insta-jib. I like gib. I think gib's a better word than jib. The jib is the correct term. I'm going to use gib to annoy you. It's a one-hit kill, first-person competitive shooter of sorts, but of course it involves dodgeball, and it has various other mechanics tied into it. It's actually a surprisingly well-featured game as well. I mean, it's it's got more features than I would have expected from a title like this. I would have expected this to be a bit of a one-hit gimmick, but it's not. Developer is Eric Asmussen. I'm going to show you a little bit of the gameplay. We're going to do a little bit of arcade first, then we're going to go online and beat people up. So, you are a robot, you play from first person, and you're playing a game of dodgeball. If you get hit, you die instantly. However, there are ways and means to prevent that from happening. You can catch the ball as it's coming in. If you manage that, you will actually kill the opponent, which is really nice. And also, if you have a ball, you can use it to directly block the target, as he just did right there. So we just want to avoid that. There we go. Thank you very much. And I'll grab this ball here as well. That was unfortunate, but never mind. Now, in the arcade mode, you have five lives, and once you're done with lives, you're done with the game. The further you progress, the more power-ups and perks you can unlock, and there are various levels and boss fights to go through. So the arcade mode is actually pretty well featured. It's not a throwaway mode, which is perhaps what you would have expected from a title like this. You'd think, oh, well... This is a game designed for multiplayer, so the single player is not really going to have too much going on with it. It actually has a surprising amount going on with it, and there's bot matches in various game modes that you can participate in. So, that's pretty good. I mean, I like the arcade mode in particular, as I said, because of that sort of permadeath aspect. And you're running on a leaderboard, as you can see up to the top right there. So, I'm actually doing really badly in this particular mission. I really hope I do better in the multiplayer, because I was destroying people earlier. And I have no doubt that now I'm actually recording, I won't be able to do that because I have stage fright, or whatever it is. Now, your robot can jump, which is very useful for avoiding dodgeballs, and it's also useful for getting trick shots. So the game is actually laden with trick shots, which will earn you, in arcade mode at any rate, more points, and also in score attack mode, which is available in both single and multiplayer. There's actually a score attack mode, which is reliant more on style of kills, more so than anything else. And there are a number of things that you can do that will make your kill matter more, such as doing a mid-air kill. If you do a mid-air kill that's going down on the opponent, well, I got a bonus there for killing someone after I died. If you do it down on an opponent, then you actually end up getting a dunk kill, which is worth quite a lot. There's mid-air kills, long-range kills, ricochet kills, all sorts of different things. All right, watch it, watch it. Thank you. There we go. There's a mid-air. Nicely done. And as you can see, it's all... Insta give that really is the game in a nutshell. I mean, it's not a complicated game by any stretch of the imagination There's the block lovely, but the way that the game works is kind of sublime so When you start moving you don't stop you actually maintain momentum There is a break button that you can use and that actually matters more than you might think. You think, well, you know, what's the point in just having you always moving? Well, it makes your movement a little bit more predictable, so it actually makes the dodgeball, which obviously has something of a lead time to say the least, matter. But it also brings in strategies like adding a jump in, and you can actually charge your jump up to full, which will allow you to, to go airborne for quite some time, actually. I had a shield up, thankfully, there, so that didn't happen. You can also boost to, ch to change your speed at a rapid rate. And you can also come to a full stop breaking right there. And you come to a full stop very quickly, which, again, can be used as an evasive technique. So there's actually a little bit of depth to the movement system. And there are also power-ups. Oh, the flying squirrel combination. I have no idea what that actually means. But the monster truck announcer is telling me that it's good, so I'm going to believe him. You can combine these with various power-ups, which allow you to do things like jetpack and have longer boosts and so on and so forth. So while the movement system looks simple, it's smooth. And it plays really well and actually has a surprising amount of depth to it. So I can dig that. There's actually a skill ceiling to be found here. Not to mention, of course, that the actual combat, as it were, requires some skill because you have to lead the target. And of course, once you lose your ammunition, not only do you lose ammo, but you also lose a, a method of defense, which is quite nice. Because while you have a ball, if you target the incoming ball correctly and you hover your crosser over it properly, you can block the ball with your ball. And, of course, you can throw the ball to bounce at a mid-air ball and bounce it away and things like that. So there is a degree of depth to be found there. But if you don't have a ball, you also have the ability to catch, which is tricky. If you can do it, it's great. 
but it's extremely risky. But in some of the game modes, it's actually required. In the team deathmatch, which is kind of an elimination mode, it's a nice. There we go. And we are dealing with some special robots that are coming in that have slightly larger balls than previously. Oh my. Thank you. Oh, there's the midair. Lovely. You have this elimination mode, as I said before, and you have to actually catch the ball in order to bring one of your players back. So there's a degree of risk reward involved in that. A lot of people online don't really seem to go that way, but when they do, they, do, they generally do really, really well and they help the team out. So if you're playing with better players, then it generally works out a little bit better. So we'll go online in a moment, but I've got to actually comment on the aesthetic and the music. Both of them are really quite cool. If you don't like flashing lights, this is certainly not going to be for you, but I enjoy the neon aesthetic very much. It certainly is a disco of some description. Lots of uh, flashing floor pieces and all manner of different wonderful things like that. It doesn't really get in the way. Some people might find it slightly obnoxious, but I tend to find that the enemies are properly colored in such a way that I don't have problems distinguishing them. But this could be a big issue for those who are color deficient. I feel. So watch out for that. If you have color vision problems, then this game might cause you some issues. I don't think there's any options to help you there, but I will check for you. I'll, we'll have a look at the options menu in a moment. All right, I'm going to try and beat this boss before I run out of lives and see if we get a perk, and then we're going to jump online and play a little bit of that. Uh, there are a ton of other game modes other than this. I mean, this is kind of a... Oh, that was close. This is, as I said, a, a very sort of standard game mode. But there's things like Grand Prix, which I don't particularly like. It's actually kind of a racing game where you have to go through checkpoints, but you also are able to eliminate the opposition, which is quite cool. There's the Last Man Standing mode that I talked about earlier. There's the score attack and all sorts of different things like that. There's also a jetpack mode where you can fly around all over the place. Sweet, beat level two. And that means I can buy things like a bonus combo, mid-air boost power, fast charge shots, and so on and so forth, and extra life. There we go. So that's how that's how that works. It's actually worth doing. There's a bunch of unlocks available for cosmetics as well. You can customize your ult with different mustaches, which is lovely. Just lovely. So look we'll at the options menu before we jump in. So there's the audio sliders. Apparently, the name of this artist is Adhesive Wombat, which I'm very impressed by. I'm not really sure that that actually exists. I'm pretty sure he just made that up. If we have a look at video here, there is a slight problem with this. I'm actually playing this in window mode right now because when you change the resolution, it changes the rendering resolution only and not the actual resolution of the game, which is a bit weird. So for recording purposes, I put it down to 1080p, but it was still rendering in 2560 by 1440. So that was a bit of a problem. I wasn't really too impressed by that. You can turn off a lot of the color, but... As far as I am aware, as I said, there, there doesn't appear to be a color deficient option, which I think they could really do with adding. I, this game in particular seems like it would direly need it. I think there, there could be problems for those who happen to have color deficient vision when it comes to the backdrops and the various flashing things all over the level. Outside of that, it's got what you'd expect. Fill the view slider, put it up to 95. Works well, happy with that. And of course, you can customize controls, mess around with the sensitivity, use an Xbox controller if you so desire. I do not desire, but hey. And then you can also do a few things uh, with the network functionality. Let's jump into multiplayer. Actually, let's customize the robot before we jump into multiplayer. We can change our bot color, as you can see right here. In fact, let's go with a obnoxious pink. There we go. And you can pick from various mustaches and glasses that will unlock at different levels. Sports laser, sports nitro, sports fire. There we go. You can, you can even do some little victory poses. Like, I, I have customized it so that my guy has googly eyes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's a little bit of robot customization. It's nice to have. Okay, let's jump into the multiplayer. So if I go to create, these are the modes available. You've got the deathmatch mode, which is exactly what you expect. Score battle, so this is all about trick shots. Elimination mode. Hoops, which is quite fun. It's a mixture of dodgeball and basketball. You have to get the gold ball, shoot it through the enemy gold ring. And there's also Super Bowl. Grab the Golden Ball, hang on to it for as long as possible. Just kind of keep away. There's a Capture the Cube. Just kind of capture the flag and also use it as a weapon. And then there's Grand Prix. And you can also put a bunch of modifiers on as well, which is really nice. So these are mutators, essentially, like Unreal Tournament. So it's really cool that they actually put this in. And there's even a streamer mode, which gives you spectator options when you're, when you're actually playing. Which is really cool. And I mean, this is quite a competitive game. It might look a little bit gimmicky, but it is actually quite competitive. And it involves a decent amount of skill. Okay, free-for-all elimination. Okay, I'm, I'm going to die immediately here. So there's the spectator going on right here. Have a look at uh, Mr. Drum Maestro. Can switch between the different characters if I want to spectate what's going on. It's kind of a shame this is on FFA mode, but we'll see. I, I'm, not, I'm not massively keen on this particular mode. I really like the basketball mode. 
certainly. And, oh, yeah, and I'm dead immediately. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can get another server that isn't running this particular mode. That would be nice. No, we're back on the same one. Let's try it once more, and then we'll just search. Quick play is just kind of throwing you into the one that's obviously got the best ping. There is a decent enough multiplayer community going on at the moment. As you can see, there are actual things going on. Uh, there's a hoops game there. Free, that's the FFA that I was in, I think. I'm okay with elimination. We can go with that. Yeah, that seems like the best way. There doesn't appear to be a ping indicator here, although you can change servers. So, in theory, anything on the East Coast is good, but it would be nice to have a ping indicator, I've got to say. All right. This is elimination. So, when you die, you die. You can get back on the field if you are able to catch a ball. All right. So, let's make sure we don't die too fast. That would be nice. I don't actually have a ball right now, so that needs to be remedied pretty much immediately. All right, if I recall, were I fighting the blues? I'm fighting the blues, right? Let's grab a power up. Huge ball, bigger shots. Ow! Well, I hoped I would be able to block that, but as it turns out, I was not. How horribly disappointing. So, is it any fun? Actually, it's a ton of fun. It, it depends on the mode that you're playing, and that's going to be very much down to personal preference. I mean, the, it's not like the there's any objectively bad game mode. Ah, team score battle. There we go. I actually like this game mode a lot. This is my personal favorite because it puts the emphasis on trick shots as opposed to just regular kills. And I think that the emphasis on trick shots is what makes the game a little bit special. So, I can kind of dig that. Oh, minute Top Gun! Lovely. Absolutely lovely. There we go. So that's going to put some score on the board for us. But yeah, the more stylish the kill, the more score you get. So I can dig that a great deal. I think that is a, a good way to do things. There we go. That is a nice pickup. Haven't noticed uh, too many netcode issues. Or actually, any netcode issues, really. Uh, obviously, some people are going to lag a little bit. Ow. Wasn't quick enough on the pickup. Catching is very, very hard in this game. You've got to put your crosshair exactly over it and click at just the right time. So... It's not easy. It is absolutely not an easy thing to do. As I said, like, the game does have a skill ceiling, and that skill ceiling is rather high. It takes a little bit of work to get where you want to go. But it's very, very easy to get into. And that's always a nice thing to see in a kind of competitive arena shooter, because that's really what it is, you know. It is a game of dodgeball. There's the block. Oh, the slam. Welcome to the jam. Oh, it's sick. And I've got my boomerang ball, so I can take a few more risks here with the hits. Super boost. Let's see if we can go airborne and get something. Oh, yes. Oh, it was so close. Dodge, deep, dip, duck, dive, and dodge, I believe, are the rules of this particular game. It's a nice and simple game, but as I said before, it has a lot going for it. It really does. Like, the just the base gameplay loop is really enjoyable because it is insta-gib. With a little bit, just a little bit. I'm at the top of the scoreboard. There we go. That's what I like to see. 73 KD. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's Insta Gear, but with a twist. You know, everyone remembers how to play Dodgeball. You know, Dodgeball is a very tense game. It's a very violent game. For some of us, it has a very bad memories associated with it. At school, where horrible things happen. But regardless, oh, it, it's, a, it's a nice little... It is a nice little arena shooter. And I think it's got plenty of life in it, thanks to... A bunch of game modes, and thanks to a rather nice skill ceiling. Thank you very much. I will take your points, and I will take them happily. Make sure no one's going after me. Can I have a ball? Where'd the ball go? Box. We need a ball quickly. Ooh, there we go. All right. Oh! Dodging the fireball. Oh! Denied! Nice. That's what we like to see. Yes, thank you, Lenny. Much appreciated. There's not really much more to say about it. I mean, it is a lovely, simple concept that's just really well executed that has a surprising amount of depth and skill involved in it. It's got a fun soundtrack, nice flashy visuals. Price tag is about right, I'd say. It's $15 regularly. It's about $12 at the start. I got the highest score. Cool. I won the match for the for our team. That's great. It's, I'd say, $15 and I think it's about $12 on the current launch sale at the moment, which I think is a reasonable price. I think maybe 10 might have been a better price, but it does have... Ah, Grand Prix, I don't really like this mode. It does have a player base. Like, people are actually playing the game, so it's not a huge risk. There was also a four-pack available if you want to get people in. And it's a salt generator. You know, I think that, uh, that people are going to get nice and salty over this game. It's a ton of fun. And you do, you know, you respawn pretty fast in most of the modes. So, ah, oh, it's so sick. 
And there are just so many satisfying moments. I'm sorry, like, killing people with a weapon that's quite tricky to use is a satisfying thing in general. And what better way to do it than a dodgeball? Now, well, it's got limited velocity. If you, you know, you throw it away, which means you end up losing the damn thing. So that's a bit of a concern. It's a great way to build a game. It's a great idea. Well executed. Simple as that. It goes by the name of... I, I actually can't pronounce the name. I can't remember what the full name is. It's it's a dodgeball game with robots in it. You should probably think about buying it if you're into arena shooters. Because this is an arena shooter, despite its strange looks and title. And frankly, it's a damn good one at that. Damn good. Hoping to see this one do well. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.